quick review on Lesson 13-1 before moving on. We talked about journalizing payment of a payroll, and the entry that is down here in the Cash Payments Journal is what I want to talk through as it relates for payroll. So we are always going to debit the account called salary expense. And that debit is going to be for the total earnings of all employees. So total earnings of all employees, I would maybe write that down if you haven't, salary expense. Then I credit all the payable accounts related to the deductions from the payroll register. So employee income tax payable came from the federal income tax table. Social Security tax payable was 6.2% of total earnings. Medicare tax payable was 1.45% of total earnings. And then these last two were the employee saying they wanted that deducted. So these are all credits payables because I owe it to other companies for the deductions. And then the difference between total earnings and all the deductions we know is net pay. And net pay for all the employees is what we credit to the cash account. So we are going to move on then to section 13-2, which is recording employer payroll taxes. And again, that entry that we just reviewed is right over here. Uh, on this side for recording the payroll. But again, that's just for recording the payroll. Um, it is not for payroll taxes. So as it relates to recording the entry for the payroll taxes, go ahead and write this entry down. But we are going to debit an account called payroll taxes expense. So when it's paying employees, it's salary, but when it's the employer that has to pay the government for different payroll taxes, it's payroll taxes expense. And to get that number, it's just the sum of all the credits, and we'll talk about those credits and how we compute them shortly. But Social Security tax payable, Medicare tax payable, unemployment tax payable federal, and then unemployment tax payable state. And again, those are all credits. We'll talk about how to compute them. I put in the credits, add them all up, and that's what the debit is for the entry. So let's talk about the four different credits in this entry for recording employer payroll taxes. Again, these are all the four credits are going to be to these, and the debit's going to be to payroll tax expense. So the first credit that we have is Social Security tax. So this is the employer's obligation to pay payroll taxes. In the last chapter, we talked about that the employee has to pay, and that is paid when it's deducted out of their check and the employer collects it and passes it along. And that's 6.2% of total earnings for the employee. Well, the employer has to match that. And in essence, they are also taking total earnings for all employees times 0.062, just like it was for the employee. So it's the exact same amount. So the employee is paying 6.2% into a Social Security retirement fund, and the employer is also paying in 6.2. So a total of 12.4% of your total earnings are always going into that retirement fund. So employee pays, employer pays. Medicare. Same exact thing. So the employee had to pay it. We talked about 1.45%. The employer also has to pay 1.45% of total earnings. So you end up with 2.9% in for your Medicare when you're older. So the employer has to pay it. The employer has to pay it. So these are the first two you're going to compute. You know how to do that. The next two are the harder or more difficult ones to conceptualize. The federal unemployment tax, which is called FUTA, F-U-T-A, FUTA, and then state unemployment tax, which is SUTA. And the employer portion, we're going to talk about how it's done. I put in red here again, the employee in Chapter 12, when we did that, does not, N-O-T, does not pay 
FUDA or SUDA. They don't have to put money into an account in case they get laid off. Only the employer does. So as far as the employer goes, it is computed by taking, again, 6.2% of the FUDA tax base, which is currently $7,000. And I'm going to show you what that means. But what that's telling you is that the employer has to set money aside and pay into this fund, so pay taxes, at 6.2% of all earnings for each employee until they hit $7,000 of earnings. Once they're at $7,000, we quit as an employer paying any taxes, unemployment taxes related to them. So that's 6.2% of the tax base, and right now 7,000 is the tax base. And we have to split this, so if the employer pays any to SUDA, then the difference up to 6.2% goes into FUDA. So the way it typically happens right now in most states is that 5.4% of total earnings is paid to the state unemployment tax office, and then 0.8% to get to 6.2, 0.8% goes to the federal. So if I, as a state, say in Florida they did 5% going to the state unemployment, then 1.2% would go to the federal. So in total, 6.2%. So that's the way this is going to work, and if you want to read more about it, it's on page 383. And once I walk you through, hopefully it'll become pretty obvious how this works. So in your handout, which you have for this chapter in section 13.2, you should have this handout. Um, if you don't have this handout, it is on page 383 in your textbook. So this is to calculate unemployment, so FUDA earnings for unemployment tax purposes. So what we need to do is I want to just talk through first kind of what some of these things are. So this first column, every employee listed, this second column really, prior accumulated earnings, that is going to come from the earnings record. And you did one of those for each employee when you did Chapter 12 stuff. So take the accumulated earnings from the earnings record. The next column, we're going to enter the difference between the FUDA tax base, which again is $7,000, and the prior accumulated earnings. Okay, so the difference between the FUDA tax base and the prior accumulated earnings. The next thing we're going to do in column four is we're going to put the earnings for the current pay period. So earnings for the current pay period. And that comes from the payroll register. Let me go back real quick because I didn't the first time explain then or show you for these people how that was computed. So if it's the difference between the FUDA tax base and prior accumulated earnings, this column, if they've already hit $7,000, that tax base, and they're above that, that means that the employer does not have to pay any more unemployment. So we would enter a zero if they're already above 7000 So, for instance, John and Ann, or John and Mary and Justin are already all above 7000 so we've entered zero. Anthony, on the other hand, is not, so we took 7000 minus 5260 to get to 1740. We took 7000 minus 1648 to get to 5352, and we took 7000 minus 6490 to get to 510. So that shows you how to do these first four columns. Then this fifth column the FUDA earnings. I'm going to verbally tell you it first on concept and then I'll give you a formula if that helps you instead. So this is telling you that you want to say out of all the earnings they just had this period, which ones are going to be taxed for FUDA purposes. 
So if I'm already at the 7,000, which are these three that are at zero dollars, if I'm already at that amount, then none of these earnings are going to be taxed because the employer is done paying tax on the first 7,000 of their earnings. So it's zero for those three people, Justin, Mary, and John. However, if I look at this next one, like Anthony, and I see that they made $1,400, they still have $1,700 before they get up to the $7,000 tax base. So if this number, the earnings, is greater than this number, the earnings in the current period, then I'm going to say that all of the earnings for this period are taxable. So all $1,494 is taxable. Again, for Anne, it is greater than the $240, so all of those are taxable. The only weirdo then that we have left is Carrie, and it said that the earnings to get up to $7,000 was $500. Bucks. Well, this pay period, they made more than that. Well, I only have to, as an employer, pay up to $7,000, so that's on $510 more. So I'm only going to have FUDA earnings that I'm using to compute the tax of $510. Then, once I've computed that for every employee, I'm going to add all those FUDA earnings and get $2,244. And that is the number that I'm going to use to do the actual payroll entry, which I will put over here for you to see. So Social Security was 6.2% of total earnings, Medicare 1.45% of total earnings, and then this was taking the FUDA earnings of 2244 on that previous schedule times 0 .008, 0 .008, which is 0.8%, and I got 1795, and then I took the 2244 times 0.054 to get the state unemployment tax payable. Add all four of those up, you would get the debit to the payroll taxes expense, not salary expense, payroll taxes expense. And then let's go back real quick to this table. So for those of you that prefer formulas, out next to this on the top, I would write this, and I'm talking about column numbers. So I would do if 4 is less than or equal to 3, comma, then 5 is equal to 4. If 4 is less than or equal to 3, then 5 is equal to 4. And that is the case for Anthony and for Anne. And then the next line I would put, if 4 is greater than 3, then 5 is equal to 3. And that's for everyone else. So if 4 is greater than 3, then 5 equals 3. For everyone else, that is true. So that is your payroll taxes section. And again, remember 0.8% for FUDA and 5.4% for SUDA. And that's a total of 6.2% for all unemployment. And the employer pays that as well as Social Security and Medicare. And those four taxes added together equals payroll tax expense.